Welcome to Omron's Quick Tip Videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up IO-Link device identification and how to use it to automatically download parameters to a replacement device. In this tutorial, I'm programming an NJ101-1020 over USB connected over EtherCAT to an NX coupler, which is communicating to the IO-Link master NXILM400. The device I'll be using is the Omron Photosensor E3Z. To start off the project, we either need to make a new project or connect to a device. Today, since I have everything out on my bench, I'm going to connect to a device over USB. First off, I need to go to Configuration and Setup, and then EtherCAT. Right click on my master and compare and merge with actual network configuration. This reads in all of the hardware that's out on the network into the software. I also want to do that with my NX coupler and make sure that those are the same. So once again, compare and merge with actual network configuration. Those are now the same. And then I want to write this to my controller so I know that the software and the controller match. And I'm going to do that by going to synchronize, starting off here to make sure we get a blank project, and then transfer to controller. Now that everything matches, I can start programming. First thing that I'm going to do is double click on my NXIL master settings. So under here are all of my IO-Link master parameters. I have my device verification check as well as my backup and restore options and standard digital and input output options as well as various IO-Link parameters. So the first thing I need to do is read in what's actually on my network right now. So I can transfer from unit, and this will go out and find all of the IO-Link devices that are attached to my NX coupler. I need to scroll down to view these, and I can see on port 1, I have a device ID of 65538, a vendor ID of 612. Here's the unique serial number, as well as the IO-Link revision, cycle time, and the data length of this device. So I'm going to write down these numbers and then copy them above. Once these numbers are entered, I can go back up to the top and select device verification setting. I'm going to use vendor ID, device ID, and IO-Link revision check. Today, I could also use the serial check, but then the IO-Link master would only accept this particular device with the exact serial number. You could use this option if you wanted to prevent any device replacement without program change. Once my device verification is set, I need to transfer these settings to the unit. Those are transferred over. On my IO map, I can see that I have port 1 data enabled, as well as power on with no module communications error or port communications error. We can also scroll down and look at data coming in on port 1, which is the photo sensor. So I'm going to watch port 1 communications as I unplug my photo sensor and replace it with a proximity sensor, which are different device models. So now that I have the proximity sensor plugged in, I get a compare error because this photo sensor, proximity sensor, while communicating is not the correct device that the iLink master is looking for. So I'm going to unplug this and then plug the correct device photo sensor back in. So 
now the error is gone. And we can see they were getting data. can also clear the error. So this is just a record that my device was changed and there was a minor fault. So let's go ahead and reset that. Now you can see my data coming in again. The reset can also be done through programming. Okay. Now let's go ahead and do our automatic device parameter settings downloads. To do this, let's put some sort of parameters in our IO-Link device. We're going to open CX Configurator FDT. Right click on the network and add the NX built-in EtherCAT because I'm connecting my NX IO-Link master over the EtherCAT port. Right click that port and scan the network. It has found the two IO-Link masters that I have attached, the NX coupler and the GX IP67 master, as well as my E3Z photo sensor I have attached. So let's open the E3Z by double clicking on it set some of the parameters. So on this, let's change the sensitivity level to I don't know, 999, okay? As well as make a unique identification, like photo sensor. Photo sensor. I wanna go online. and then write these parameters to the device. Okay. Now let's jump back to SysMac Studio. Go to my IO link master settings on the NX. And I want to enable device backup on port one, as well as restore on port one, and I'm going to transfer that to my unit. Okay. So I'm gonna to go to CX Configurator FDT and read from the device now. So we'll see that we have a through beam sensor, E3Z, and the serial number is 11000092. So I'm going to unplug this photo sensor and replace it with an identical photo sensor. What I want you to pay attention to is the serial number when I read that back in. So I've now plugged in a different photo sensor of the same type. I'm going to read this in now. So you can see only the serial number changed. The control has written photo sensor as well as sensitivity level from the last device. You can also see this in SysMax Studio and double check that we're still getting data coming in here. Thank you for watching Omron's quick tip videos. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.